Hey guys, welcome to Home Sweet Homeschool. My name is Ashley and I'm a homeschooling mom to one. And today I'm participating in a collab with some other homeschool mamas that's going to show you what it's really like in a homeschool day. What does homeschool really look like for some of us? Each of us have very different styles, I'm pretty sure, and each of us use different curriculums. So make sure you check out the other mamas in the playlist. I'll link it down below in the description box. So today you're going to get to see our lesson three. Um, and our lesson comes from gather around homeschool. Now, if you're um, familiar with my channel, you know that we switched to this curriculum in September and that we absolutely love it. So if you haven't heard about it, watch my other videos that tell all about the other units because they are awesome. If you like unit studies, then this is something you might want to check out. So we're going to do lesson three today and it's going to take you through all different subjects and the only thing we have to add to it is our math and that's your master books. So, um, Check out the other videos in the playlist, and I hope you enjoy this day in the life. For our morning basket today, I'm going to be reading a chapter from the Boxcar Children. And then I'm also going to be reading our page out of our devotional that we really love. And while I do this, while I do the read alouds, he works on his cursives. So let me show you what that looks like. We use this website, this Kid Zone handwriting. Um, I like it because you can copy and paste it into PowerPoint, and it has really helped him. He was struggling with his Abeka that I had bought him, but this has certainly helped him. So he will work on wh whichever one he chooses. I print off a bunch of these, and he chooses which one he wants to do, and I think he chose the letter T for today. He'll work on that while I read. So here I am reading from our chapter book, and the teacher and me can't help but to point things out as I'm reading so I'm going to finish reading our chapter from the Boxcar Children. And while I'm doing that, he is working on his cursive that I showed you earlier. It's really helping him. And then I'm reading from our devotional, and I'm always talking with my hands. So you're going to see my hands moving and really big motions from me. This week in math, we're learning all about factoring. And I found this really neat game from Math Geek Mama on Pinterest. Um, where you print out the numbers and then it has a bunch of little number cards and I don't have everything laid out right now I'm getting it ready for him but he'll come I introduced factoring yesterday and we worked through like um, factoring using like rainbows um, he really enjoyed it we really made him make that connection between what factors were and we played this game together yesterday so what I plan on doing this week is to give him about four a day and let this be his warm-up so he'll come work on this and put the factors on there and then he started this yesterday. This is from his master books. Um, this is how they teach factoring. So he did these two. And we talked about how to write the factors in order from least to greatest. And he'll finish the back today. So he'll come and work on this when he gets finished with his handwriting. So he's just matching the factors up to the product. That's what he's working on right now. Okay, after practicing his factoring that he did with the little um, pieces right here, he's finishing his master books page for today. Okay, excuse my hair, we've been outside, so I look a little rough. But I'm going to read from the teacher's guide that I have on my iPad. And we made, let me show you our Play-Doh. We made Play-Doh yesterday. Super easy recipe. I think I put um, where I got it from on my Instagram. <coughs> really easy to use. And then he's got these little space figures that he's also playing with. He's going to play with this and keep his hands busy while I read all about the sun. That's today's lesson. All right. Think of a hot sunny day when you go outside and play. Quit doing that. After a while, you start sweating because it's just so hot. The sun is what keeps our earth warm and what makes our bright summer days so hot. The sun is over 90 million miles away from earth, so imagine how much hotter the sun itself is. So there's a picture of it. Wow. Tells you the radius, the distance <coughs> from the earth. It's a yellow dwarf surface and the temperature is 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. I wonder okay. how close you can get to the sun until you just disintegrate. Yeah, I don't want to get age restricted, so I'm not going to say it. Okay. Why do we have seasons? Remember that the earth is a globe or sphere. It's fatter in the middle and not as fat at the top and bottom, right? The middle of the earth is called the equator. Countries along this line are like summer all year round because they're closest to the sun. The earth is on a slight tilt as it orbits. Here's the tilt right there. 
or goes around the sun. It takes one year for the Earth to go on one complete orbit around the sun. For half the year, your part of the Earth is tilted towards the sun, so that's when we have summer, when the Earth's tilted towards the sun. And for half the year, your part of the Earth might be tilted away from the sun. So what season would we have if we were tilted Winter. away? Yep. Unless you live along the equator, <coughs> and then you see the least amount of changes in weather. Not only is the Earth going on a journey around the sun at a tilt, but it's also turning around at the same time. Every day the Earth spins, and this is what gives us day and night. The sun is what gives us day, night, summer, winter, and fall. What is the sun? The sun's also the largest object in the center of the solar system. It's technically a giant ball of burning gases that astronomers call a star. It's <coughs> mostly made up of hydrogen gas and helium gas. Hydrogen is one of the most abundant gases in the world, and helium is the gas that we put inside a, a balloon to make it float. Yep. Or to make your voice sound funny if you've ever tried doing that before. I did that on Megan McCarthy. It says, what if the sun disappeared? If the sun somehow suddenly vanished, the earth would yeah. the earth would charge straight ahead through space. Without the sun's gravity to keep us in orbit, we would just move in a line. Since objects are so far apart in space, it's unlikely we would hit anything. Without the sun to keep us warm, <coughs> however, there would be no life left on earth. Everything on earth would be frozen. Really? Yes. So the word sun that we use today was derived from the old English word. Here's how they wrote it. They wrote sun. The Greek word helios and the Latin word sol are often used as roots in words related to the sun, such as heliocentric and solar. Have you heard those words before? Mm, I think. Yeah, I know you've heard helios. That's in Greek mythology, so you've probably heard that. Yeah. Why is the sun important? There are many other stars in the universe. Some of them are smaller and some of them are larger than our star, so some people would consider our star to be pretty ordinary. But the truth is that the sun is far from ordinary. Our sun is the only star that has a planet that supports life, planet Earth. The sun is very important for supporting life here on Earth. It helps keep us warm and provides energy that plants use to grow. We need plants to provide oxygen for us to breathe, food for people and animals, medicine, paper, or even fabric. Look at that picture. And this even has really nice pictures in it. Not only does the sun provide us warmth, but it also provides us light. The light that we can see is called visible light. There's also some light that we cannot see called infrared light and ultraviolet light. The Earth's atmosphere filters most of the light that's harmful to us, but some UV light still comes through, and this is what causes a sunburn. So that's why you have to wear sunburn. white at the beach. Yep. You have to wear a sunblock. It's also interesting to add that light travels very fast, but the Earth is so far away, it takes about eight and a half minutes for light from the sun to reach the Earth. So we're gonna take a break for a minute. There's an activity listed right there. It says activity break. We're gonna cut um, construction paper, dark construction paper into three pieces, and we're gonna put sunblock on one of the pieces. And we put them outside. We put one with a sunblock, outside, another one without sunblock outside, and then we keep one inside. And it says to leave it out there about three hours and then go and observe what happens. And you should be able to see the effects of UV rays. So we're gonna do that really quick. My son sprayed this paper with sunblock. Um, I think it was like SPF 30. We sprayed this one sunblock and this one without, and we're gonna leave them for 30, not 30 minutes. We're gonna leave them for three hours and then come back and see what's happened to the black paper. That's okay. We did our activity with um, the sunblock. So it's sitting outside. He's actually making a clay astronaut while we're working on this. We have a little bit more to read and then we'll start working in our notebook. How does the sun keep the earth in place? All the planets and objects in our solar system are held in place by the sun's gravity. Gravity is an invisible source that causes objects to move toward each other. Just like gravity pulls objects to the earth, the sun pulls the planets and keeps them moving around it. When one object moves around another object in space, we call this an orbit. So see how on that they're showing the orbit? Like ace orbit from a show thing. Yeah. So now we're gonna talk about the story of sunglasses. Long before people knew the sun's UV light could hurt our eyes, they tried to protect themselves from the glare of the sun. The earliest references to sunglasses are found in China and Italy. The Chinese used smoky quartz lenses and Emperor Nero of the Roman Empire, you remember Nero from yeah. our history, used polished gems to watch gladiator fights. 
In the early 1900s, Hollywood stars made sunglasses more popular by wearing them, but people gained more access to sunglasses when Sam Foster began to mass produce them and sell them in America. Almost all sunglasses today provide UV protection for our eyes. So we're finished with our reading for today. That's about how long it is every day. It doesn't take very long, and we just show the pictures and do the activities, and now he'll go and work in his notebook. So today's history and math for the focus on the sun is all about the sundial. So what we'll do is we'll read up at the top. It tells you what to read and then it tells you exactly what to do on a paper plate and how to make your own sundial. And then after you leave it outside for an hour, you go back and um, you check on it. So you make a prediction. What do you think is going to happen to the sundial when you return? And then you talk about where the shadow is now and does it match the current time. And then it also has a did you know. So we're going to work on that right now. How did the ancient people in the world tell time before clocks were invented? The sun. The first known clock was the sundial. You can tell time by looking at the shadow cast by the sun as it shines on the pointer of the sundial. The sundial depends on the rotation and movement of the sun. The Egyptians were the first to use sundials to tell time. It's considered to be the first scientific instrument. Let's make a sundial. So on the bottom of your plate, you're going to draw a clock face. Okay. So make sure you line it up just like a clock with 12 and 6, 3 and 9. Okay, I'm going to have to hold it. You're good. Right there. Go ahead and put your 3 and your 6 and your 9. And then that will help you space it out. There you go. Lay it down there. Awful. That's okay. Good job. So we'll punch a hole and we'll take it outside, okay? All right, you're going to write, what do you think is going to happen when we go back after an hour? What do you think is going to happen with the shadow? It's going to change. Like, what do you think it's going to do? going to move to the next number. Okay, put that on there. Next. X. X. Oh, yeah. T. I'll help you spell number. It's okay. N. U. M. B. E. R. Good job. After reading, we do this um, science notebooking page that's all about the sun. So first he's going to label the sun in the solar system, and then we're going to write about what he knows about the sun. And I just keep um, my iPad right here, and we just refer back to it as he's working on it. So go ahead and label the sun. And then the light from the sun. What does the light from the sun do for us? What's something you remember? Uh, it helps what? Helps. Does it help us freeze? Or help does it help us keep us warm? warm? Yeah. Keeps us warm. Keeps. All right, what's the next one say? How does the sun support life? That means how does it... How it, does it grows keep? and like grows. What grows? Makes things like get bigger like a plant. It helps plants grow. Yeah, very good. And they can write as much as they want to. If you have a child that wants to put a ton of stuff on here, that's perfectly fine. We usually just talk about this. He'll narrate it and I'll write. It just really depends on the day. If he's writing, I usually get him to just write one thing. Um, and then he's about done. But you could really do as more as much or as little as you want to. And tell me one interesting fact about the sun. You think about it and write down one thing that you think's really neat about the sun. Uh, that it's a ball of gas. That's a good one. Remember a complete sentence. Oh yeah, sorry.
Peace, Bob. There you go. Now, if I, it's going to be a sentence, what do I do to the first letter in the sentence? Oh, dang it. Sorry. That's okay. So people ask about the copy work and the spelling from this. So you're going to get your spelling words from this copy work. Um, and I usually ask him beforehand because he does not enjoy copy work. So I do not make him copy it. But I get him to look up here and if there's anything he can't spell, that's the words that we choose. He could spell all of these. So what we actually just work on are the spelling words she has for the week down here. Our spelling words this week, um, she has breath and breathe are your two words. So what he's going to do today, one of them is a noun which is a noun, a noun's a person, place, or thing, and one's a verb, so an action or something you do. We're going to see if he can remember which is which, and he's going to write a sentence with each one. And then what will happen in, like, the next lesson, this will be gone, and I'll say this out loud and he will write it down and then you count how many words he got correct so that's a good way to check his spelling and to check um, like punctuation like this and the quotes that's how we check it so he's writing his two sentences we talked about which one was the noun and which one was the verb and he understood good job our language arts in this lesson today, here's writing. This month, every month there's a writing project, and this month they're going to write a comic book. So this tells all about what brainstorming is, and then it says a comic book is a visual form of storytelling that pairs images with text. So today they're just going to choose a topic, and he's decided he wants to do his own idea. And it said you could even have your mom, dad, sister, brother to help you write this down for you. So you may write down your topic. And it was what? The day you met an alien? Yeah. Okay. Day. I, and it's not going to be neat, met an alien. They said it didn't have to be neat because you're brainstorming. So now we're going to come down here and we're going to write all of our ideas for the story. Who's the story about? What's going to happen? Any ideas you have, you're going to work on brainstorming. Okay? Um, so who's the story going to be about? Me. Me and who? The... The, uh, and the Another thing to think about is where is it going to happen? Is it going to be a made up planet no, or no, a planet you no. know about? Oh, it's going to happen in your backyard? Yeah, it was a awesome. story. It was a non-fiction. All right. It can be any kind of story you want it to be. It can it's be, a it's non-fiction. It's going to be a comic book. Now, non-fiction means true, and fiction means man. I know. Matter. It could be true. All right. Um, what else did it say? What's going to happen? What's going to be like your, your We big... become friends. Oh, how you become friends. That's a good <laughs> So last unit, we wrote a nonfiction about um, He Chose an Owl. So I'm really excited that he gets to do a comic book. That will be fun. And I have a really neat comic book paper from Target that I can let him use. But you just work on this throughout the unit. You'll come to it every couple of lessons, and each time they work on a new part. Each lesson also comes with some art, and art is not my son's favorite. He'd rather be playing, but... Um, we learned yesterday how to draw a sphere and how to make things look 3D. And then today he's just going to copy this sun. You can do it with pastels. You can do it with watercolors. Whatever you want to use. He said just hand me the yellow and orange markers. He's going to make his own sun. And because it's art, I just let him do it the way he wants to. And that's what he's working on right now. All right, here's his sundial that he made. He's already put it out here. We put it out here an hour ago and it's already moved. Um, obviously because the sun has moved so he thought that was super cool and all we needed was a pencil and a piece of paper and a marker so it's an hour later we went back out and checked the um, sundial and so his question is where's the shadow now so he's going to put the time it's on now and did it match the current time 
one. So what was it on now? It was, it was on, on one o'clock. All right. And, and did it match? Yes. Yes. So yes. <laughs> all right our day is over and as you can see he's in a pretty good mood so it's been a good day it took us a little over an hour and it really varies 45 minutes to a little over an hour each day it really depends on this guy anyway how do you think it went pretty good went pretty good what do you think about our gather around curriculum i think it went i think it's really really good what do you like about it it's easy it doesn't stress me out. Yes, that's that's the big thing. That's what he told me when we first started. It's the first thing we've ever done that doesn't stress him out, and that's important, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, because learning shouldn't be stressful. Don't get all up in the camera. All right, he's got one thing he wants to uh, say real quick. People, if you have any kids, check out my new plush collection video that's going to be my new plush series. And he has a channel, D3's this. Toy World is the name of his channel, and he wants your kids to check out his new plush series. So check it out. If you have any comments or questions about anything we did today, please leave them down below. And thanks so much for watching. Bye. Bye. And he's a lizard.